Hi, this is Ron Martinson of ronmartblog.com, and I'm here today to talk to you about Luminar from MacFun. Now, Luminar is a photo editing product that, if you already have Photoshop and Lightroom, may not necess be necessary for you. However, those are expensive products with a subscription service, so if you'd rather just a small pay one price uh, for a powerful editing product, then it's a great choice. Now, one of the main features of this product is it comes with a lot of cool presets, which you can toggle on and off here. And if I come over down at the bottom, click on Basic, I can see all the presets that are available in one row, or I can choose a category. And so for this, I'm going to choose Portrait. It's got a little tricky horizontal scroll that can be sometimes hard to work with. If I click on it, if you use the Mac Fun product, you're familiar with this, that when you choose a preset, you can choose the opacity of that preset. And you can also choose to make it a favorite if you like. Now, the preset is a series of filters with certain settings. So if there was something that I liked about it and I didn't like, well, I could turn those on and off. So if I were to toggle this, I could see the impact that would have on my image. If I decided I wanted to get rid of it altogether, I could just click that X and it's gone. If I change my mind, I could do undo. There's this history panel that shows me all the changes that have been made. So if I ever want to go back in time to anywhere, I can much quicker than just a bunch of undos. And I can go up here and you'll notice that things that are in orange are visible and things that are white are not. So if I wanted more real estate and just hide that histogram and even layers palette, I could. Now, what's really important here is this whole notion of a workspace. So let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and let's choose the portrait workspace. Now we've already got some portrait stuff that was applied from our preset, but what this workspace does is it gives us a collection of filters that haven't been applied. Think of it as a workflow or you know, a list of to-do items, and you can choose to set whatever values you want. I'm done with my preset, so I'm going to go ahead and just hide that one. And then I don't need my layers right now, so let's go ahead and get more real estate there as well. Now I want to cool the temperature off in this image. I just like it to be a little cooler, so I'm going to do that. There's this tone option, which has all your basic uh, controls, but there's this other one called Smart Tone. Now, if I were to typically come in here and do some exposure and some shadows and some highlights, you know, I can get good results, but I've got to make a lot of changes to do it. Now, let's just revert back to the beginning again here. Now let's use this cool smart tone and pay close attention to how these dark areas and the shadows will get bright without brightening this up here. So it's really cool. You know, I've, I've brightened up the jacket. I haven't made things worse back here. So it's really handy. Now if I still wanted to kind of add something like a little contrast, well, I could do that. And, you know, these are all you know, stacked effects. They're not uh, non-destructive. So if I ever want to go back and visit something, maybe make it a little bit warmer, I can do that. And just because these are here doesn't mean I need to use them. Maybe I want some, you know, vibrance instead of saturation. I can do that. If I wanted to make some changes and I wasn't happy with one of them that I made, like maybe I have too much saturation here, I can double click and I'll just reset it back to zero. If I want to change everything, then I'll just reset everything back to where I started from. If I want to see what that effect does, again, I can go on and off. And if I decide, you know, hey, I don't really want to use this after all, just clear it out. Now you'll notice when I do remove a filter, it changes my workspace to custom. Don't really worry too much about this um, detail. This is only applicable if you want to save a new workspace. It just has the filters that you want. 
what you don't want to do is you don't want to come up here and try to set yourself back to portrait because if you do that it's going to put that layer back to all those uh, original values again which is going to undo all your changes so be careful about that fortunately there's a good undo not a problem so let's come up here maybe go ahead and you can do a white vignette or a black vignette I personally like the black vignette, so let's do a little bit of that here. And there's all your typical changes that you can make. Maybe brighten it up a little bit more in the middle. Again, very often I'll come along and just say, hey, what did that do? How did it work? And I don't want to add any grain, so let's turn that off. And I don't need this. Now, there's no reason for me to turn these off. I can just leave them there. Personally, I'm just you know, OCD type and like to just have the things that really are applicable for my layer. And what we'll do now, so this was this layer here. This was our preset. I think it was a soft shred preset. And this was um, portrait workspace changes so you can name these whatever you want and then now I can also create a new layer now I'm just doing this to kind of show how this works you know I can come along here and type anything I want like structure and maybe do a little negative structure in this image doesn't really matter um, just kind of showing a concept now on the side here you have various tools transform tool that's useful if you come up here and do this create new stamp layer you can then transform that uh, layer that you created there's a clone and stamp tool a erase tool this is a denoise tool and this does cropping now for this example i'm going to come do this erase tool Now, this is one thing I'm not too crazy about. I think it's extraordinarily slow um, for what really amounts to a, a healing brush concept. The user interface has zooming, and to get to 100% really quick, you just click on this. And you can toggle back and forth. Now, the way this works, again, I think it's a little quirky. You can change the size here, or like uh, most products, you can use the bracket keys. So I'm going to left bracket to make it a little smaller and when I click on this what it's doing is it's showing me what it's going to make changes to when I click this erase button so once I do, do that it actually goes and does the erase again I'm used to products that do that in real time so not especially fond of um, this aspect of this product definitely think there's a lot of room for improvement once I've confirmed that I'm happy with it I click apply and you'll notice what it is actually created a new uh, layer called erased image layer and from here I can make any other changes I want so let's say for my next layer make an adjustment layer I want to make changes that just apply to her face so oops so I'm going to come along here and make a little oops mask that just really kind of covers her face and then you know, if I wanted to expand this out a little bit or whatever I could so now I've got that now you'll see that it's turned off so I want to come up here and click invert so it's just going to show on her face and then maybe the filter that I want again is my tone filter and maybe this time maybe I do want exposure and just brighten it up a little bit And you'll see if I were to come up here I can enable disable the mask I can show the mask 
they are luminosity masks and the ability to uh, copy masks from one layer to another. Each of the filter layers, they also support masking and blending modes. And so there's a lot of power here that you don't typically find in Lightroom by itself. And again, you know, once I have my mask all set the way I want it, I'll just click apply. And I can see before and after. And also I can go back in time and say, okay, what did each of these layers do for me? So quite a bit. I can turn them on in any order that I want. So kind of cool product. Again, not for everybody. If, you've, if you're using Lightroom and Photoshop and or Photoshop and you're happy, then this isn't the right product for you. If you're looking for something that's fast, you know, slider based, so slightly different user interface, um, you know, inexpensive, now you have to worry about subscriptions, then maybe it's a good choice. Um, actually, one last thing before I go is there's also really great support for sharing your images. I can send it straight to Facebook or Twitter or 500px, Mugmug, Flickr, and so on. And then I also can hand off over into uh, you know, any of the other MacFun products or even Photoshop and Lightroom. So there is some integration support there. So check out my blog for more information down the road on this product and uh, potentially future discounts and special offers. Thank you.